Hey everyone, just some quick context on today's episode before we begin. This is a two-part story that was shared to me by one of my subscribers. They tell us of their experience dealing with some crazy exes. It does start off with a lot of information as well as background context, but when you get to the reveal of everything, it's going to leave you quite shocked. It's the subscriber's hope, and mine, that you're going to be very careful about the relationships that you get into. But with that said, sit back, because we got a pretty intense one for you today. Let's begin. About 17 years ago now, I was 22 years old. For the record, I'm a Caucasian female, and at the time, my now oldest son was only 2 years old. I just moved in with my mother after my son's father had left us to go back to Mexico. I had gotten myself a new job at an Arby's in town. Well, within a month, I met and started dating a very tall and good-looking co-worker who in my retelling were going to call L. L was a dark-skinned guy who also lived with his mom and we often worked late together at work. He knew I had a young son and didn't seem to mind it and he even started inviting us over to church with him, as well as his mother, and soon we were being intimate together as well. Things progressed pretty rapidly, and we had a few pregnancy scares. Anyway, then the weird stuff started. For starters, I found out that one of the supervisors, a larger woman, who I'll call R, had previously dated my boyfriend L. That kind of weirded me out because... From time to time, she would openly flirt with him, despite being our supervisor, and she would drop little hints about their past relationship, which he had broken off. Then there were the younger girls. They would be overly friendly with him, kind of in the same way he had been with me before we started dating. But other than that, things were going okay between us. I often drove him home late at night, and our relationship started to get a little bit more serious. I ended up moving out of my mom's house with my son and I started living with another relative who lived closer to my job. I started telling my boyfriend how I wanted to settle down so that my son could have a more stable life. Also, I told him I was done with dating around and I was now looking for something more permanent. My boyfriend told me at first that he wasn't interested in getting married. This was because his own parents' marriage had failed really badly and he didn't have a relationship with his own father. All the while, his own mother had really taken my little son under her wing and had started acting like he was their legit grandchild. To be honest, I didn't really mind that at all. We were going to their church regularly and had begun to feel very welcome. He eventually agreed that we should get married as we both had our whole lives to continue to get to know each other. So then, one day we went ahead and went to the city hall and we made it official. However, neither of our families knew that we were getting married and we still lived separately for quite a while. I ended up having an early miscarriage soon after that and that's when both our mothers found out that we were married. From then on, things with him started to get very, very strange. He started acting like we weren't together anymore and started denying the baby I had miscarried. He acted really depressed and would tell me conflicting things sort of like he didn't want to be with me, but then would turn around and say he would kill himself if I left him. I should have taken this as a major red flag and divorced him right then and there, but I was an idiot. So when my relative told me I had to move out because he was losing his house, I ended up moving into an apartment with my new husband L and my son. For a short time, things went okay. We both quit our jobs at Arby's and he stayed unemployed for a short time, while I got a different job. He would stay home with my son while I went to work a few blocks away. By now, my son was around three years old. My son started telling me that he wasn't allowed to use the toilet during the day when daddy was home and sometimes I would come home and find my son and husband would be gone with no sort of explanation. I would have to call around for hours, scared out of my mind, just wondering where they had gone only to find out that my husband had taken my son to his grandmother's house or to a friend's house. Once, he even took him to a bowling alley where it suspiciously looked like he and his friends were on a double date. 
Then pictures of naked girls started showing up on my husband's screensaver on his phone. He had never before had this on his phone and it bothered me as we were still fairly newlywed. My mom wasn't in the picture at this time because she was mad I'd gone and gotten married behind her back and we weren't talking so I felt very alone and had nobody to really talk to about this. I got mad that my husband wasn't looking for work and we had a few fights about it because we had begun to get behind on our rent due to the fact that my job at Dunkin Donuts didn't pay all that much. So my husband would drop my son off with his mom and then go walking around town looking and applying for jobs while I was at work, or so I thought. That entire time, my husband just couldn't seem to find a job that would hire him. One day, I decided to go through his backpack he typically would take with him while he went to look for jobs to see if he had even taken up any paper applications. What I found instead blew my mind. His backpack was filled with explicit adult entertainment movies. I was speechless. For one, we didn't have a joint bank account thankfully and he didn't have any income himself so how did he get all these movies? They couldn't have been for free. I was also very hurt because why would he need that if we had just gotten married? Things weren't adding up for me. I started snooping around and I found messages where he was getting picked up by somebody else and basically hanging out with them all day instead of looking for work. Fast forward a few months and we get kicked out of our apartment for failure to pay rent. All three of us move in with his mother in her tiny two bedroom apartment. Since his mom has one of the bedrooms and his sister has the other, there is no bedroom for us. So all three of us sleep in the living room. And my husband still didn't have a job and had joined his church's choir which met a couple of times a week. He told me his dream was to do music, which I admit he was pretty good at and he was tired of looking for regular jobs. My son started going to a new daycare since his mom couldn't watch my son anymore. I also had a new job closer to my mom's house. After about a month, he finally got a job at a little Caesars pizzeria and I was relieved. But then I found out that he was looking up explicit adult oriented material on his sister's computer. I didn't say anything about it to him, even though it did bother me. He had never acted like this while we dated, and I started to get really depressed and feel bad about myself. I decided to make more of an effort to spend time with my husband, as I thought it might fix things between us since living with his mother was kind of stressful. I started asking to go with him to his choir practices. They were pretty boring, and my son would get bored and restless. I eventually stopped going because I just didn't enjoy them and they would take hours before they were over. All this time I had been saving up money on my own to get us another apartment so we could move out of his mother's apartment as I didn't feel comfortable there and was tired of sleeping on the sofa or floor every single night. One day after I went to work, I discovered I had accidentally taken my husband's phone to work with me by mistake. Our phones were both flip phones and looked very similar. I opened the phone on my break to text my phone and let him know I accidentally grabbed his and that's when I saw the very descriptive text messages between him and another woman in his choir. And they were talking about how they couldn't wait to see each other and be with each other again. I had recently put a down payment on an apartment and we were set to move in within a few weeks but now I had proof my husband was cheating on me. I got so angry I went home and I basically told him we couldn't be together anymore. He got embarrassed and left. I was left alone in his mother's apartment. He never came back after that night. I went to his job to try to look for him and his boss told me that he had abruptly quit his job and left. I just couldn't believe it. His mother told me after a week that my son and I had to move out since we were supposed to move into the new apartment together anyway. I knew I wasn't going to be able to afford the rent all on my own. So I went back to the apartment manager and told him the situation and I asked for the deposit back. That's when I found out my husband had already come by and taken all the money. The manager felt bad for me but there was nothing he could do as my husband's name had been on the application even though it had been my money that we used for the deposit. Upset, I went back to his mother's apartment and told her about what happened. She had no sympathy for me whatsoever 
and she told me that since we moved into her apartment together, we would have to move out together and now only had a few days to move out before she made a big thing out of it. Sadly, I had nowhere to go now, but I did find out quickly afterwards that my husband had taken the money and used it to buy a bus ticket at his state so he could go and stay with his estranged father, someone he hadn't talked to in many years. I now called my mother and told her my story, and she agreed to help put me up in a hotel for about a month or so, so I could save up for another apartment again, which thankfully I did successfully. Now you would think this would be the end of this tragic tale, but no, it wasn't. We were still married and I was too poor and dumb to figure out how to get a divorce. I didn't make much money at the time, barely enough to save up for rent and pay for my son's daycare expenses as he was still under the age of 5 and couldn't go to school yet. Once I had moved out of the hotel and been in my own apartment by myself for a while, now working two part-time jobs and seeing someone new, who newsflash also wasn't a good guy, I started getting random text messages from my husband. My new guy knew that I was married and knew about the whole creepy situation, but somehow I didn't feel comfortable telling him my husband was still texting me. I didn't know if he'd get upset or angry if he knew he was in contact with me. At first, the text messages were easy to ignore, as he basically just told me he had been staying with his father and that he'd calmed down and gotten a stable job. He wanted to know if I thought we could get back together. He was now living in Michigan and I was in Indiana at this time. I ignored most of the text messages, but I made sure that I made it clear that I had no intention of getting back together with him and that I had moved on. I wanted a divorce, but I just couldn't afford it. Then the truly awful text messages began. He started texting and calling me and telling me all the lewd things he wanted to do to me sexually. When I didn't respond to those, he would text me and call me really awful and horrible names, basically telling me things like I was a worthless slut, etc. I tried blocking him, but different numbers would call or text me. Then one day I started getting text messages from an unknown number claiming he was a detective in Michigan. He claimed my husband had been murdered and that I needed to call him back. I didn't recognize the voice on the messages and started to get really, really scared. He wanted my personal information so that he could send my husband's belongings. I didn't tell him though and instead informed his mother about the disturbing text messages and the disturbing phone calls I had been receiving. She and I had not spoken for a very long time at this point, and she seemed irritated I had called her, but told me it was most likely not true or she would have been contacted first. So I chalked it up as some weird prank orchestrated by my husband for whatever deranged reason, and I put it out of my mind. I had been with this new guy for almost a year by this time, and I was now pregnant with his child. I had stopped working both jobs now, only working one, and my baby's father stayed with me most nights of the week, but not every single day. I also had taken my son out of daycare as it just got too expensive. Now, a very nice and elderly couple I had known since I was a teenager was watching my son while I worked. One night, the elderly couple came to pick me up from work with my son in the back seat of the car as they waited for me to finish up the closing shift at work. Another car I didn't recognize pulled up behind their car by the curb. A woman got out and suddenly walked over and got into the couple's car. I was stunned. It had been my mother-in-law. We hadn't spoken at all except for that one random time since my husband and I had separated. And now here she was sitting in my babysitter's car, hugging my son. Being as young as he was, he only half remembered her as he hadn't seen her in quite a while. The elderly couple was scared because they didn't know the woman whatsoever and they had not been expecting anyone other than me. My mother-in-law climbed out of the car holding on to my son and told me she was going to take him to spend the night with her since she hadn't seen him in so long and she had missed him. Bear in mind, she had never before called me since the separation asking about my son. She noticed I was heavily pregnant and became upset. I told her under no circumstances was she taking my son with her. We had a ride and we were going home. She didn't know my address either. The elderly couple drove me home and asked if I would be okay. 
I said I would and that was the end of that, but it catapulted me into keeping a better eye on my son as well as the surroundings around us. I notified the police about what was going on and tried to get a restraining order against both my husband and his mother, but I found out she no longer lived at the address and since I had no exact address for either one, I would not be granted any restraining orders, which completely blew my mind because who the heck knows their stalker's address. Then everything stopped for about three months. I was still pregnant at this time and had just gone to some chicken restaurant for lunch with my son and was walking home with him with our food. I had a huge cup of soda in one hand and my purse and the food in the other. My son was walking slightly ahead of me, saying hi to everyone on the street as we made our way down the block. A short while later, I noticed someone far down the block walking behind us. I didn't think much of it at first and I continued walking. It was a very tall skinny man but I couldn't make out any facial features as they were wearing a hoodie that obscured their face. We made it to our block and started walking towards our apartment and this is when I noticed the man was still walking behind us, although he had caught up just a little bit more. Suddenly, I recognized him. It was my husband, of all people. I hadn't seen him in about a year, and we hadn't spoken or texted each other either. I had never given him or his mother my new address, so how he found us, I'll never know. I now began speed walking to my apartment, picking up my son and practically shoving him through the door, telling him to run upstairs and see if my boyfriend was home. The door was a very heavy door and needed a key to get in, so I felt safe thinking that if I could just get inside and upstairs, we were going to be okay. I didn't know what my husband's intentions were and I really didn't want to find out. I tripped on the stairs and dropped my cup all over myself and the stairs. The next thing I knew, my husband's hands were grabbing me and trying to help me up. My son had come back down the stairs worried about me and my husband grabbed him and started hugging him. My son clearly didn't remember him or maybe didn't want to and tried to wiggle his way out of his grasp. He started telling me how much he missed us and that he was home now and wanted to be with us too. I told him that I was pregnant and now living with somebody else and that I moved on from our previous relationship. He responded by telling me that he didn't care whatsoever. He would be the father of the new baby that my indiscretion didn't matter since he had been the first one who had cheated. I guess he saw it as some sort of payback and now we were even or something. I told him no, that wasn't going to happen and he needed to leave. Thankfully, he did. Now, I would love to tell you that was the end of the story, but again, it isn't. From 2008 until 2020, I remained married and estranged from my husband. In 2011, I met the man that I'm still married to today. My current husband and I had been together for around 9 years and have 3 children of our own. In 2020, we decided that we wanted to get married. My current husband knew everything about my past and that I was still technically married to the other guy. I had tried and failed over the years to get a divorce from my estranged husband because I didn't know where he had gone and getting a divorce by post was rather expensive. Eventually, I got tired of trying and gave up before I met my now husband. Him and his family had given me a lot of grief over the years for still being married to that guy and I felt sick and guilty that I still was, and that my fiancé blamed me for not being able to get married sooner because of it. Well, that started my search for him anew, and I quickly discovered that he had previously tried contacting me on Pinterest, and he had left me messages about how he was sorry for his past behavior, etc. The messages were pretty old, but I gave it a shot and messaged him back. I looked him up on Facebook through my fiancé's phone as he was blocked on my account and I found out that he was living in Oklahoma and it looked like he was also with somebody else and had a young son. I now felt confident I could ask for a divorce from him and we started messaging about that. I got him to give me an address so I could send him divorce papers telling him I would pay for the divorce. Since we didn't have any children or any assets together, it was pretty straightforward until the part where he found out he had to give the court information about his income 
and assets. I wasn't seeking anything from him, it was just part of the normal paperwork that I had to fill out as well. But once he had heard he had to give out his personal information to the court, he stopped conversing with me and blocked me. But luckily, I had enough of the paperwork signed by him that I was able to take that to court and talk to the judge so I could explain the situation. As long as he didn't show up to the court to contest anything the day of our court date, I was going to be clear. I was finally granted a divorce in 2020, and six months later, almost to the day, I was allowed to marry my fiancé, the love of my life. I know not getting a divorce for so long seems like it makes me the bad person, but I was just not someone who was making smart choices at the time, and I didn't have the extra funds to try and launch an investigation and divorce of someone who clearly wanted to remain hidden for so long, and I truly had wanted to forget about it. I had not anticipated meeting my then fiancé and falling in love with him, or even having more children. It wasn't until we were more financially stable and better off that I was able to pursue my divorce, and I haven't looked back since. Thankfully, I've had no further contact with my ex, and his crazy mother too. I am happy now and much better off than I was when my oldest son was little. I guess the moral of the story would be to get to know who the heck you're dating long before you decide to sleep with them or even marry them. Some people are just crazy and they'll do a lot of terrible things to you. As for my second son's father, who happened to not be home at the time my husband showed up that last time, that is a whole other story in and of itself. I'll call that part two. If you have any questions about my story, please let me know and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you and stay safe everyone. Please make good dating choices. Hello. When I submitted my last story, I told you I would have a part two. So here it is. When we last left off, I was telling you how I just married the love of my life after my very long and harrowing experience with my ex-husband. However, I neglected the whole story about what happened with my second son's father and why that relationship also turned out to be a nightmare of sorts. This is part two. So from the first part, we've already established that I've obviously have made some pretty poor choices in the past regarding my love life. Unfortunately, the second time around wasn't so great either, as I continued my bad trajectory. So first off, I met my second son's father, who I'll call Jay, before I was separated from my husband. At the time, he was just a normal customer at my job and I served him coffee every single day. His job was across the street from mine and down about a half a block. He was a mechanic who would come in every morning at the same exact time and buy coffee for everyone. This was also before my husband and I had begun living with my mother-in-law. Jay was really sweet, if not a little bit equal parts charming and flirty. He seemed like a genuinely nice guy who was just a tad rough around the edges. One day, he offered me a ride to go pick up my son from daycare as I had none, and I accepted as the daycare was kind of a long walk from my job and I had no car. We got to talking and he told me about his family and two sons and his immigration to the United States as he was from Mexico like my son's father also had been. He was a church going Catholic and said he really didn't mind helping me out once in a while since our jobs were so close to each other and I made good coffee. After I found out my husband was cheating on me and we separated, Jay started coming into the shop and talking to me frequently sometimes more than once a day. After some time had passed, he started asking if I needed rides more often and sometimes would take my son and I out to dinner after he was picked up from daycare. Jay would drop us off at the hotel I was staying at after dinner and he would invite us to go to church and even to a Catholic Bible study with him at the house he was staying at with another family that was letting him stay with them. I wouldn't say we were dating exactly then, because nothing was ever verbalized between us at the time. It was just him giving us rides and occasionally buying us dinner. Perhaps he felt bad that I couldn't afford a lot. I don't really know what he was thinking. Anyway, he helped take me around town to look for apartments I could apply for 
and even volunteered to watch my son for me on days when he wasn't working, so I didn't always have to send him to daycare, which was starting to get pretty expensive. Being naive and still an idiot, I let him do that. They would stay in the hotel until I was done with my shift and then pick me up. At the time, I saw nothing wrong with this. Today, it would have given me a major red flag. However, in time, we ended up kissing a few times, but nothing beyond that until later. Now, you might not think any of this as creepy at all, but hold on, that part is coming. Well, eventually my time at the hotel ran out, and my mom couldn't afford to pay for another month there. I did manage to find an apartment to rent, but it couldn't move in right away. Jay said he had an uncle who might let me stay with him until I could move into the apartment. I went with him to visit the uncle, but the uncle didn't seem fond of me, so he only let me and Jay and my son stay for one night. We had to sleep on the floor, and the bathroom was incredibly gross, with standing water in the tub. I don't think I would have wanted to stay another night there, even if he would have let us. Somehow though, Jay and I ended up having sex for the first time that night. After that night, Jay started to distance himself from me quite a bit. He told me that he didn't want to hurt his two sons, and that he didn't want to be in a serious relationship. Looking back on it now, I think he may have been married himself, but I don't know that for sure. In any case, he continued to help me out, and he would often fool around with me if he got the chance to do so, or if he decided he wanted to stay overnight with me at my new apartment. One night, I got invited to go to the Bible study with him at the house where he usually lived at when he wasn't spending nights with me. The people who owned the house were hosting the dinner and Bible study along with some other mutual friends of Jay and the family he lived with that consisted of a husband, wife, and a little girl. I brought my son with me so the kids could play together and Jay showed me the tiny room that he had. While we were in the room, the wife came into his room and started talking to him, acting like I wasn't even there. She made him give her all his dirty clothes and acted really flirty with him. I'm not going to lie, it kind of bothered me as by this time, Jay and I had been sleeping together more frequently. It came to pass later that I found out, I don't remember who told me, that Jay had slept with the wife and the husband didn't even know. I guess the little girl had some sort of mental or physical condition and the mom was tired of it and wanted another child, but was having a hard time getting pregnant by the husband, and so slept with Jay so she could try and get pregnant without telling her husband. According to Jay, he only slept with her once or twice, and then stopped because he felt guilty betraying his friend, and had also met me around that time. Soon after, Jay moved out of their house and in with me and my son. When he found out that I was pregnant, he initially denied it was his and told all of his friends behind my back that the baby wasn't his and that we had never been dating whatsoever, only that he was helping me out and that I let him live with me out of gratitude or some stupid nonsense like that. Even though he still invited me to do stuff, I'd absolutely no idea why people were giving me weird looks or awful side eyes. They all looked at me as if I was crazy and I was for believing his lies. So right before I'm about to have my second son, I come home from work like usual and I notice that Jay isn't there. It takes me the whole night with my prego brain to realize anything is missing when I go to the bathroom and I realize his toiletries are all gone. I run to the bedroom and fling open the closet and I see that all of his things are gone. He's left me with absolutely no explanation whatsoever. Throughout everything that was going on with Jay, my crazy ex-husband would occasionally text me with his lewd comments. It was incredibly stressful. I ended up going into labor a month later and giving birth without him even knowing or being there. After I had my baby, I went to his job only to find out he didn't work there anymore and they didn't know where he had gone. His boss was angry at him because Jay owed him money and left him without any help at the shop as the boss was an older gentleman and only employed one or two mechanics to work with him. Well, another month goes by, and his boss calls me out of the blue and tells me where I can find my baby's father. So I show up at his job with my son and my mother, demanding to talk to him and wanting to know if he wants to see his newborn son who is in the car. 
I know that was probably a dumb thing to do, but I didn't care after all he had put me through. He promised to come by after work and see his son, which he did. Much to my mother's dismay, Jay moved back in with me and started treating me a bit nicer. He began parading the baby around and showing him off to all his friends, which really angered them as they all still thought I had cheated on him or who knows what. He started talking about how we didn't want to stay in Indiana anymore and suggested we move somewhere else. He said he had friends in Texas who could get him get a job and would let us stay with him for a while until we got set up. I used my tax return to buy a car and we packed up my car and his truck and we moved to Texas with my tax return money, staying with another couple who had three kids. As soon as we got to Texas, he sold my brand new used car I just bought that was in my name to another couple he had just met. Our stay with the family ended up being cut short as well due to the fact that the wife started treating me really rudely. The husband was nice enough and didn't seem to mind us at all, but the wife was acting almost jealous and wouldn't let me help out around the house or anything like that. She ended up kicking us out because she didn't like me and later I suspected that Jay had slept with her as well and that's why she was acting the way towards me. So there I was in a new city, a new state, no car and nothing to my name except what was left of my tax return. We soon moved into a side-by-side -side and Jay took a job down the block at a mechanic shop while I stayed home with the boys. After a few months of relatively good relations, Jay stopped coming home after work and started staying out very late, coming home drunk from the bar almost every night, leaving me alone all the time with the boys and with no transportation to go anywhere or buy groceries and diapers. If I needed to go anywhere, I had to walk there with the boys in the Texas heat. I had no phone as he had broken it in a fit of anger and I often had to walk more than a few blocks to a payphone to try and call my mother to check in with her. I'm sure she expected me to go missing at any time. In the two or three years we lived in Texas, Jay became increasingly irritated with me over the slightest thing. He became abusive to both me and my older son, calling my son names and treating him like he was less than because he was hyperactive and had a hard time sitting still and quiet. He would slap, kick, or push me if he was angry or if I confronted him over his behavior. The only times he ever told me he loved me was when he was drunk. Right before our son H's first birthday, I took him to the dollar store to get party supplies. He ended up standing up in the cart when my back was turned and tipping it over. A metal hook caught my baby's face on the way down as he toppled the car over. I was horrified. I rushed to the front of the store and asked if they could call 911, but everyone was standing there like idiots, so I rushed out of the store. Luckily, that was a rare day when I had actually borrowed Jay's truck to get supplies. My older son was with Jay at work. I called Jay on a stranger's phone before driving as quickly as I could to the hospital with one hand over my baby's forehead to stop the bleeding. It turned out he only had a quarter size hole in his forehead where the hook had caught him and the flap of skin had mostly kept him from bleeding excessively as I had held my hand over it the whole way to the hospital. Jay showed up with my other son to the hospital. The doctors asked us to help hold our son down so they could stitch up his forehead, but Jay refused and walked out and went back to work. A nurse watched my other son while I stayed and held my baby's hand and leg still so they could give him stitches. I had never felt like more of a horrible mother than I did that day. Unfortunately, my son H still has that scar to this day, but thankfully he doesn't remember the event and we mostly laugh about it now, about how he was such a mischievous kid always getting into stuff and climbing things that he shouldn't have. I like to say that event ended things between us, seeing how uncaring he truly was. But no, I stayed with that insensitive jerk for a while longer, finding out almost a year later he had been having an affair with a girl who strangely enough looked a lot like me, just heavier, who had four children herself and her children's father was in jail. I only found out because he literally left me home for an entire week to go to Dallas, which was an hour away from us to go pick up parts for a car. 
and came to find out later through some of his guy friends who decided to rat him out, he hadn't taken a co-worker like he claimed he had, actually he spent the weekend with another girl. When I confronted him about the obvious cheating, he just shrugged and told me that he didn't want to hide it from me anymore and that he wasn't sorry and was going to continue dating her while living with me and my kids. That was the absolute last straw for me. I was heartbroken and angry over so many things I had endured for this man's attention and affections and in the end, none of it really mattered. I found a local church willing to help me leave him and I have to say they were some of the most awesome people ever. The pastor and his wife showed up to our house to, air quotations here, visit us and they brought a truck. They distracted my husband while another pastor friend of his helped me get the few things me and my kids owned and then drove us to a motel where they put us up for about a week. They took us to the grocery store and bought us some cheap food like cold cuts and peanut butter, things we could live off of until we could get into a shelter, which we did. But this is not the end of the story yet. Jay found out where we were staying in the shelter and started trying to come around and make up with me so he could see his son. All the while he had moved in with that other girl and her four kids. I went through the shelter program, I got a job, worked out a deal with one of Jay's friends, who we will call X, to share his car so I could go work and pick up my kids from their new daycare. Things were going great, until I moved out on my own and got a small rental house a block away from where Jay and I used to live. Jay figured out where we moved to and he began coming over and asking to see the kids. I didn't want to let him because he was almost always drunk when he came over and I didn't feel comfortable letting him into my home. He'd occasionally buy random things that never fit for his son and leave them for us. Both he and his new girlfriend started calling my phone I bought. No idea who gave them my number but they would call and talk a lot of nonsense about me over the phone about how I wasn't letting him see the kids and that they were going to take them from me. That scared me, but I called the police and reported them and the calls eventually stopped. For a while there was radio silence and I moved on with my new life. Then Jay came back saying how he didn't have a job or money and he was starving. I felt bad for him because he looked really bad and I didn't want my kid's father being like that and he seemed genuine at the time. So, I gave him some canned goods and let him see his sons for a little while, but that just opened the door for more harassment. One day I had to work and couldn't take my kids to daycare because they were sick. I should have just called in sick myself, but it was a new job and I didn't want to take the risk. So I called Jay and asked if he would watch the kids. I didn't want his girlfriend anywhere near them. He assured me it was fine and nothing was going to happen. After work, I found out from my older son that Jay had taken them both to her house to let them play with the kids. He told me the kids told him that Jay had bought them a new gaming system and that they were not allowed to touch any of their toys. Jay's girlfriend had also told my children that she was their new mommy and she would be coming to take them away from me very soon. I was furious and now frightened that this woman was absolutely crazy. I told Jay he wasn't allowed to take my kids ever again, that I would risk losing my job instead. I blocked him and stopped talking to him completely, but that didn't stop him and his crazy woman from showing up to my house and trying to pound down my door all the while swearing words at me. One day I took my kids to another dollar store in town and I happened to run into that woman and her kids coming out of the store. I turned and practically beelined it for the car, trying to get away as quickly as I possibly could. All the while the lady started running after me with her kids, as they screamed at me that she just wanted to talk to me and that we could be friends. Clearly she was psychotic if she thought we were going to be friends after all that. I decided my kids and I needed to get out of Texas. I went to work that next week and put in a job transfer and I moved to Louisiana for two months before ultimately moving to Wisconsin where my mom lives and this is where I met my current husband not long after. Jay and I never talked again after I moved to Wisconsin and that woman finally left us alone. 
I heard years later from a friend of his who tracked me down on Facebook that Jay had died in a motorcycle accident as he tested driving a customer's motorcycle that he was fixing. Jay's name was never on his son's birth certificate because he refused to sign it, but I did manage to get a copy of Jay's death certificate for my records just in case I needed it when applying for public aid as they often make you name the child's father when asking for assistance. I was able to find Jay's older brother through Facebook through that same friend of his and asked him for a copy. The older brother knew very little of me, but thankfully knew about Jay's son and admitted he knew his brother wasn't the greatest person in the world, so he didn't have any trouble reaching out to his parents and obtaining a copy for me. He asked about my son a couple of times, but I told him my son didn't really remember Jay at all and wasn't really interested in getting to know that side of the family, as Jay had never been fully in his life. The brother didn't seem to mind, and thankfully all that horrific mess is behind us now. I know it must make me seem like a bad person, but I'm glad Jay is dead and he can't hurt anyone else. I also found out that Jay was largely on some kind of drugs throughout our entire relationship, and that is what probably caused all his crazy mood swings and irrational behavior. Since I've never been a smoker, don't drink and have never taken drugs a day in my life, and Jay never kept anything like that at the places we lived together, I was pretty much clueless. The drinking masked a lot of it too, as I tended to avoid him whenever he was there. I feel really sorry for my kids, and I wish now that I could take it all back, and if I could have a do-over of my life, I would definitely make wiser choices and never get involved with anyone with those kind of traits to begin with. But I think what is truly scary about the whole thing, not only with him, but with my ex-husband as well, is that I thought I knew those men. I thought because we spent time together and had gotten to know one another and were intimate with each other, that I knew them. I was stupid enough to trust and believe their lies and stuck with them since I felt like I had no way out and no one was going to help me. I felt trapped and scared and like everything was my fault so I should have to handle it on my own. But now I realize I should have reached out for help sooner and tried harder to get out of those relationships instead of making my children and I suffer like that. I hope whoever hears my story will maybe have the courage to do what they need to do so they could get out of their crazy situations before it's way too late. I very easily could have been murdered by this man in a fit of rage and nobody would have known I was missing or even where to look for me. He could have even stolen my kids and run away with that crazy lady at the time. There are so many worse things that could have happened to us. But I am grateful that we did manage to finally get away. It however has taken me an incredibly long time to learn to trust again, but thankfully my current husband G is pretty patient with me. Sometimes, I still get scared that I'll find out that he's cheating on me or that something bad will happen to us, but we've been together for over 10 years now and we've been married for 3. We have three beautiful kids together, and my oldest son, M, has moved out and lives with my mother while he studies as he's 19. My second son, Jay's son, is 14. He's very smart and has made honor roll several times this year. I'm so proud of my children and can only hope that when the time comes for them to be in relationships, they'll make far better choices than I did. Anyway, that is the end. To this story. Much love from me and my family. Hey everyone, so that was it for today's video. A little bit different from normal. I know you're all usually used to seeing about 5 to 10 stories a video, but uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different today, kind of give myself a little break while still giving you guys a, a pretty intense story. Uh, so that's why I did what I did today. If you do have a story that you like to share for a future episode, uh, just as this kind subscriber did and just as all the other subscribers have done, you can send them in using the user submissions email which is on screen. That is tcfnarrations at gmail.com and you can send any sort of scary story. It could be a paranormal story, it could be a home alone story, it could be dealing with a crazy ex-husband or a crazy ex-wife. 
uh, basically anything that's kind of around the whole uh, scary, creepy uh, horror, uh, send it in so we can keep giving you guys episodes because you guys know I really love giving you these videos, but uh, I do tend to like to do more of the exclusive stories that have never been shared on YouTube so that every time you click on a Creepy Fox video, you're getting a new experience each and every time. But hey, um, I just wanted to let you all know, just in case you missed uh, the last upload, uh, that was the uh, six uh, true scary stories to accompany you on Valentine's Day. I uploaded it uh, towards the end of Valentine's Day. Uh, if you missed that episode, uh, please do make sure to go back to listen to it after this video. You guys did incredibly great on that uh, Valentine's Stories compilation. Uh, it's so weird because I get people that get angry that I do compilation episodes, yet they're the ones that always get the most likes, they like, they get most comments, more viewership. It's really weird, so I don't know, maybe it's just like I, I should stop paying attention to the to the bad comments. I, I have that problem where people tell me like, you know, don't listen to the, the bad comments. And yeah, I know I shouldn't, but sometimes, you know, it gets to me. But anyway... It seems you guys really like the compilation episodes because, like I said, those have that that new one like I just uploaded. It's got so many viewers that I can't speak. I'm too excited. Um, it's got a lot more viewership than uh, you know the previous uploads. But uh, again, I did notice that the last upload didn't get viewed. So uh, just like you guys gave that compilation episode a chance, hopefully you guys give the previous upload a chance and this one because. Uh, I think if we can continue doing that, uh, we will definitely see the channel start to, you know, be revived, if you will. Just because for so long YouTube has uh, been suppressing my channel. Uh, I don't know why. Um, I've tried to figure it out. Uh, I've asked fellow narrators that, you know, do what I do. And uh, I mean, they don't really see any sort of issues with their channel. So it just seems like YouTube just targets certain uh, channels for whatever reason. I, I don't know. <laughs> But regardless, I am enjoying the ride and I'm enjoying everybody's support that comes out to actually watch the videos, you know, who leave comments, uh, which, you know, thank you, thank you to the channel members of this channel who uh, support my channel. That is something that, you know, um, that's not required, but the fact that you guys, you know, um, do that is really, really incredible. And I really appreciate you guys uh, so much. Um, if you guys did want to check that out as a way to help support the channel, um, you can check that out on my uh, channel. If you go on the desktop or even on mobile uh, next to subscribe, it should say join and uh, you can check out more details there. Or if you want to pick up some uh, merch down below, uh, it's always below the video player. You can check out the uh, shirts, stickers, sweaters, coffee mugs, etc. if you want to check it out. But uh, yeah, um, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. I thank you again for watching this a little bit different of an episode. Um, I know it wasn't exactly like uh, what I'm usually used to uploading or what you guys are usually used to getting from me, but uh, I didn't really um, want to leave you guys hanging without any other upload this week. So uh, yeah, thank you uh, to the amazing subscriber who uh, shared this story with me and allowed me to share it with everybody here. I'll catch you all on the next episode. Take care and have yourself an amazing day.